Welcome, my fellow minions. It's great to be back, and we are going straight into our tips and tricks for Afterlife. When you're starting a new game, Redbeard says that you must use the random world generator to create a map. Don't use Navi's Gain, which is actually removed now from the latest version. Also, do not use the pre-gen maps. The best option is the random world generator, so create your own map from this. In the burnt biome, there are no towns or cities, and this is probably the real reason that there is no gen in the mod. So Trader Gen is not there, as I mentioned in my previous guide, but I like the conspiracy that there's something more evil and suspicious going on with the trader removals. So we'll just stick with the more sinister reason, but the practical reason that Redbeard doesn't have gen in as well. There are no cities or towns in the burnt biome. Screamers, our friendly little wench who likes to haunt us all the time. Now, the great thing in Afterlife is that you can chop, shoot, burn, you can forge all you want. You can use torches as many as you want. You can blow up stuff and do whatever you feel like, and you will not attract a screamer. There's no screamer heat in the game. Screamers do show up. They will show up like normal zombies wandering around, and they will call in their minions. But they are not affected by how much heat you are producing or whatever you are doing. So go ahead and forge like crazy. Sooner or later, you're gonna see this infection symbol. Usually it will show up at around about the 60% mark. Now, if you want to know if you are infected or not, you can craft yourself a test kit. If you go to the medical crafting section, you'll see that the Z virus testing kit appears quite early in the crafting selection. Once you have the ingredients, which doesn't take that many, you can then craft it. Then put it on your person, or at least on your taskbar, and read it or consume it by holding the left mouse button in. At the end of this, it will tell you whether you have the virus or not. Now to combat your infection, you're gonna be using Sophia or Sophia spores which is from the mushrooms that we spoke about in the previous guide. These mushrooms only appear at night and you must go and collect them. The best thing to do is use them with your manuka honey. So when you're cutting down trees, you should always leave the stump behind. There is a chance that the particular stump will turn into a beehive. Then by going up to the stump, you select the left mouse button and hold it in to collect the honey. Combine the manuka honey with your mushroom related ingredients and you will then get Sophia syrup which you will then be able to reduce the infection by 15%. One of the best goals to actually move towards is under the medical crafting track. By obtaining herbal antibiotics you can reduce the infection by 10% and you can stall, that is you can stop the infection from increasing for 15 minutes. Killing yourself is not going to help. You'll return with the infection anyhow. As your infection rate increases and you start getting into the higher and upper 80%, then you will start noticing your screen will change into some kind of like watercolor painting or something. It's very difficult to make out things. At the point of your turning, your infection symbol will start flashing and then the screen will go black. There is a big 10% penalty to your attributes and your skills. So you really don't want to go through this whole process and you need to fight the infection and try and keep it down. After a few minutes, the icons will disappear and you will now be reset as if it was on day one without the infection. So even if you did test yourself with an infection kit at this point, it'll probably show that you don't have the virus. When you are building or when you are doing some construction, be careful of the resources that you are using, especially when you are downgrading. So by pressing and holding the R key, you can choose which resource you would like to use. We have a few blocks over here that we have used steel on. Now, if you have the wrong resource selected, you can easily downgrade in no time, especially with a faster mallet or hammer. Downgrading is very easy and very fast, and you may lose your upgraded block. Wooden spikes are pretty amazing in this mod. You can use them outside your mine because of the pesky zombies just waltzing in sometimes. So place a couple of spikes outside your mine and this will help prevent them from falling in but also at least give you an early warning when a zombie comes wandering by. 
There are many animals in this mod. Especially in the early weeks, you'll spot the rabbits, the chickens, and the deer wandering around, and a lot of boar as well. Place the wooden spikes around your base, and you will often be able to capture animals. Just be aware that animals also attract zombies, so don't leave the carcasses lying around. So the sparks are a great means of keeping zombies at bay, but also getting food in the early game. Currently, in Afterlife, crops and farming works the same as in vanilla. However, when harvesting, press the E button. Do not harvest by punching. So if you press the E button, you will always get at least two seeds. If you punch, there is a chance that you will get only one or no seeds. So for now, press the E button and this will give you a guaranteed two seeds. This is excellent for farming because you can keep doubling your harvest and end up with more seeds at each time. So as long as you have one seed, you can use that to create large farms. When you start the game, you are given a couple of choices when it comes to the class. You currently have six classes. There are going to likely be more added by Redbeard at a later point. I think the two most popular classes are the Normie and then the Sheriff. The Normie comes with the wristwatch, which a lot of people can't do without. The Sheriff, on the other hand, is what I've usually started with. There are a lot of zombies in this game. So starting with the sheriff will certainly help because he comes with a baton and a service pistol. This certainly helps with the many zombies that you will encounter in the first few days. Plus he can open up all those annoying cop cars that you will come across. So you won't be surprised by any zombies jumping out at you. You'll be able to open and collect whatever is in the cop car. When you're trying to open up a chest, you will notice that there is an improvised lockpicks option. The hoodlum is the only class that can do this. Water is one of those things that you will find is very important in the game. When you first load in on a new game, make sure you loot the closest POI. It very often will have a cooking pot. You need this for boiling water. Once you have a campfire down, you'll also be able to upgrade it. In a recent update, a frying pan is now needed for the making of bacon and eggs. As you know, boiling water takes a very long time in afterlife. You may want to add something else in. You may have progressed very far with whatever you are doing and then the only option you have is to cancel. However, in afterlife, if you hold the shift key and then click on the cook button, it automatically adds in the job and queues it in the first position. And the great thing is that you don't lose the time on the previous job. This is extremely convenient for those who don't want to lose progress on the first job that they were doing. So how much water do you need? Well, you need a lot of it. And with the time at the beginning of the game that it takes for you to boil water, I would suggest to have at least three campfires going. Now, obviously with all of them, you need a cooking pot. So get out as much as possible and try and loot and find at least three cooking pots. Yes, it takes a very long time to boil, but if you have three of them going, it should keep you stocked up with water. Always carry at least one bandage around with you. You never know when you're going to get hurt and start bleeding. If you bleed, it can take a very long time for the bleeding to stop. You'll notice that this icon appears over here. It has nothing to do with your health as such, but as your blood goes down, your vision starts to fade, and when it hits zero, you will fall unconscious. Completely at the mercy of the zombies. Nothing you can do about it. You could get killed while you're unconscious. You could wake up a little bit later as your blood automatically starts to passively regenerate. When it comes to building your base or setting up your base, I would suggest not building and setting up in a town or in a city. Build on the outskirts of the town where there will be fewer zombies. If you have lots of POIs around you, then this will also attract zombies. Getting your character wet is a negative thing. However, when the difference is between dying of dehydration or getting a bit wet, I would take the option to get water. So standing out in the rain and looking up will give you a small amount of water. And this can be the difference between life and death. What you can also do is make a hole in the roof of your base. This will allow you to get water as well as obtain the rest bonus from being in your base. When you're obtaining water from looking up, you'll also see a little icon appear which will tell you that you are getting wet, but you're also drinking water. Everyone has noticed the rain on glass effect, so while you're in the rain, it can obscure your vision. Some headgear can help decrease this problem. So you look at a hat, you'll see that there's a rain on effect reduction, as well as possibly headgear with goggles or glasses on them. 
So as we add this headgear, we see that there is a visible reduction in the rain on effect. So look out for these items. They can certainly have a positive effect on when you are trying to aim and view things. Quality and degradation go together in the mod. So any item that you're using is going to degrade and that quality will slowly go down. Do not repair your item until it is broken. Each time you repair, it will degrade the item to the point where eventually you will not be able to repair it and will have to just throw it away. Make sure you only repair it when it gets to the point of breaking. The radiation zombies are pretty deadly in this mod. A great weapon to use when you do find it is the stun baton. It is currently only a lootable item, so you can't craft it. But this OP weapon is pretty good when it comes to rads and ferals. If you want to obtain better weapons, you have to take certain things into consideration. First, you must either go into the desert or the snow biomes to find more weapons. With a higher loot stage, you will get more guns and melee weapons. Problem is, they are all lower tier. Or lower quality items. So if you do happen to find steel, ink canal or more powerful guns, it will usually be a lower quality with about one mod slot. If you want better quality gear, you're generally going to have to craft it and this is where you need to decide what you really want to prioritize. If you want an ink canal spear, normally to obtain something like this it would be getting to level 100 and you need to read 100 magazines for that. Now, in Afterlife, I obtain 100 magazines to unlock it. However, once you unlock it, you can still only craft at tier level 1. You would have to read 1000 magazines to maximize the tier quality you can craft. You can understand why some players need to be carried away on a stretcher once they find out. So the conclusion is to at least get out into the desert for higher end weapons. However, quality, which is the better tier of weapons, is going to be found with crafting or buying from the vending machine. Of course, only guns can be bought from the vending machine at the moment. So if you do plan to craft, then probably stick with focusing on the melee weapons. For guns, I suggest you make fake money, the counterfeit cash, and convert it. You can also do treasure chests when you can find the actual maps and hopefully get enough money to buy the guns. If you or one of your members in the group are the normie class, they also get a 25% better deal with the vending machines. So that is quite substantial. Anyway, this is how crafting functions for now. The maximum you see is the unlock number. You will still have to keep going past the maximum to unlock better quality gear. Forge heat is very important in the game. When smelting, you will require a particular heat level. At the start of the game, in the forest biome, you will find coal. However, coal is not something that you will always find very easily, and you can notice it on your map by the black icon. Before you get coal, you can also try and use charcoal. Charcoal is a byproduct. So when you are burning items in your campfire, for example, you will get a charcoal byproduct. It'll just appear and you can use that to give you at least a level 2 of heat. Once you do have coal, this will give you a level 3. And anthracite, which is found in the snow biome, this will give you heat level 4. But you'll only need this much later in the game. The heat level indicator appears at the bottom. And so this would be 2 and a little bit, basically a heat level 2. If we then change this and move to coal... You wait for this timer here to run out and it'll now be shifting over to coal and you can immediately see the heat level increasing. And we move to anthracite and now it moves up to level 4. This is without a bellows. If you add in a bellows, which you're only going to get much, much later in the game, immediately we get an extra level of heat. So no matter what fuel you use, even if you go back to charcoal, with a bellows you'll get an extra heat level. Which means that you can then burn fuel which is cheaper and more easy to get and get that extra level of heat. At the start of the game it's very unlikely that you will have a base. So at least if you can get your bedroll down, it will provide you with a rest buff if you stand on it. Once you put down a land claim by your base, then the whole area that surrounds your land claim will give you a rest buff. There are different levels or tiers of resting, which will all provide additional vitality. 
and especially at the start of the game, your vitality is gonna make or break you. I would also suggest setting up your horde base either near your base so that you can get the same rest effects or you can set up another land claim by your horde base. So this will also benefit you while you are fighting the zombies during the horde night. Under your character menu, you will see the vitality summary as well as the buffs that are affecting it. With the decor stats, you can add items from around the world. So you'll be able to pick up pictures and signs and they usually give you a tier one or tier two buff. Right at this moment, there is no tier five decor, so you will not find this in the world. I found two tier four decor items, either a pool table or a piano. For tier three, you can get a bear statue or a bear rug. There's also this medical sign that I've noticed is tier three and hasn't been changed or downgraded yet. These horns that you can find quite often around the world are also a tier three. Be careful of adding these to your wall. I don't know if it's been fixed yet, but very often they will just fall off the wall. So I tended to just put them flat down. Also be aware of the number of zombies that are around your base. When you have a claim block down, then there will be an icon that appears with the number of zombies that are close by in the zone. The more zombies that appear showing that your base is insecure, the more your rest will decrease. And this will obviously also affect your vitality. The other two aspects that certainly do affect your vitality is water and food. So make sure you're always topped up with water and food, which I do realize is much easier said than done. But those are two things that will definitely affect your vitality. Once you show up with the infection, your vitality will also take a hit. To help combat all of this, you can try and use the perks. When I first played at the start of the game, I spent a lot of time dumping points into things like combat and loot. In my opinion, this is a bad idea. Spend your points on things that are related with vitality and survival. This will make a big difference to your overall ability to play the game. You can worry about combat and weapons and your ability to fight better later on. If your vitality is low, it's going to affect your stamina. Now, when you have super attack, it also increases the stamina cost. And so many players have gone with this, hoping to have a greater attack. But unfortunately, they are spending lots of time combating their stamina at the start. You'll notice an icon and an audio notification letting you know that something has appeared on the left-hand side of your screen. By clicking on it or going into your character screen, you'll be able to see what the wanted food or item is. In this case, I must eat a sham chowder, which will then give me a boost to my vitality. So watch out for these symbols. They can also appear as a sweet item. Right, the lowdown on all the ores and trying to figure out where the hell everything is. First up, your forest biome is going to be your main source for all those initial ores and metals. Calcoparite ore is your source of copper and that is in the forest. Cassiterite ore is tin, that is in the forest. Iron ore, coal, all in the forest. In the burnt biome, we have our source of zinc. This is sphalerite ore and you'll find that in the burnt forest. Anthracite, that is in the snow biome. Chromite ore is your source of chromium and that is also in the snow biome. In the desert, there is nitre ore, which is your source of nitrate powder. Galena ore is also in the desert. That is your lead and used for your bullet tips. Oil shale is still in the desert, just like it is in vanilla. Finally, we have probably the most difficult ore to obtain, which is garnierite. Garnierite is only in the wasteland. The zombies are the main problem when it comes to getting Garnierite. It's not like the Garnierite is difficult to find, it is actually quite easy to see. However, it is all the rads tracking you down and trying to kill you. There are various suggestions about how to get the ore. One option is the use of stealth. The perk inconspicuous. This can be very useful along with quite high stealth values, but inspicuous is the key. Going to the outskirts of the wasteland, you can use a bow or a crossbow to kill off surrounding zombies. You will notice that I am in the center of a group of rads in the wasteland. They are all around me and you would expect any noise and certainly mining would attract them. However, if you do use the inconspicuous perk, especially if it is maxed out, you can achieve invisibility within 15 seconds. So I am mining this ore and not being noticed. 
Unfortunately, as soon as you move, we will have liftoff. This can be combined with moving around the outskirts and killing off local rads while in stealth. Unfortunately, it does take patience. With stealth, you can actually kill rads without attracting many of the others. With inconspicuous and stealth shooting them, you'll be able to keep them quite clueless once you are invisible. You would think he would see me, but as he gets closer, he realizes that, well, he's got something better to do. Now, I'm just demonstrating this. I gave myself a bow and in my playthrough, I never really spent that much time with bows and my skill is pretty crap. So if you had a much higher skill with some perk books, like 50% bonus to bows or much higher sneak damage at night, you could be quite a force to be reckoned with. The one big problem is that if you try this downtown or with any of your blue-eyed friends, it appears that these guys have skills. So this is unlikely going to work with the smart zombies. Just a quick tip on leveling your stealth. Stealth leveling or upgrading is only done when you are sneaking near zombies. Over here, I'm leveling my stealth skill, but not moving. Well, I lie. I am actually moving. I backed myself into a corner. I have inconspicuous activated as I'm not actually moving from one point to another, but as I have the S key down and pressed, the game thinks I am moving. So I remain invisible and I'm gaining stealth without the zombies ever spotting me. For example, you can see it in this quick demonstration. I'm currently completely invisible. If I suddenly put down 25 zombies all around me, they are still pretty clueless. They have no idea I'm here because, well, I am invisible. Now, if I push forward into the fence and I don't move, but the game thinks I am moving, you'll notice my rapid advancing in my stealth skill. Because there are 25 zombies all around me, the more zombies I have, the faster the skill is going to increase. Now, obviously, you're not going to be doing something like this, but you could use it to your advantage by remaining invisible and pretending to sneak around zombies while not really moving. As soon as I move, immediately they pick me up. So the inconspicuous skill, I think is certainly something that one can explore. With it, you can look around, you can do many things such as mining and not get picked up by the zombies. So hopefully stealth and the inconspicuous skill will be of some use to you. Great. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next one.